What's up everybody and welcome back to Tudor Kitchen. Today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. We're going to be doing a recipe experiment. So I recently came across a channel called Google Foods where he basically was showing us how to take a cheap piece of steak like this and tenderize it like it was a gourmet quality piece of steak. And he did this by using pineapple, which intrigued me because it's pineapple. But he basically wanted you to use the skin and also the flesh and to kind of blend it up into a pulp, but I decided against the skin. I know it probably maybe help, could help, but the type of steak I have, it was perfect just using a flush. I mean, honestly, there's really no real right or wrong way to cut up your pineapples because you're just going to be blending it, but I don't like to make my blenders overwork, so I tend to like cut out the, you know, the, the cores and all that kind of stuff. I'm also adding some Worcestershire sauce in here about a cup and I'm also going to add about a fourth cup of soy sauce the reason why I added these is because after doing some research more on this uh, a lot of people were saying that this entire recipe just lacked flavor like once you ate the steak you just discovered that it was completely flavorless which I wanted to prevent so I decided to add onions and garlic as well as some soy sauce and some Worcestershire sauce I'm adding about eight cloves of garlic, and I'm just adding, you know, it doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of experimenting with this, but I felt like these would be great flavor additives. Um, and I planned on using the pineapples kind of like a Trojan horse to introduce those flavors into the steak so it doesn't lose it. I don't know if it'll work, but we're gonna see. And I also have some chilies here. You can use like maybe some red chilies, maybe some jalapenos. I just wanted to spice it up with something else. Um, I'm also salting this up. You can use some salt, maybe some black pepper too, maybe some uh, garlic powder maybe. Um, yeah, again, I don't have a food processor, but I do have a blender, which I use for pretty much all of my stuff like this. And again, I don't really like to make my blenders and stuff overwork, so that's the reason why I kind of took my time while cutting everything up. But, you know, it smells pretty fragrant already. Maybe it's just because the combination smells amazing, but... You know, as you can see, it blends up really easily without the core or anything else in it. But this is plenty. It just makes all this like fragrant pineapple juice that smells amazing for real, for real. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take my cheap cuts of prime rib. These are prime rib steaks, guys. And I'm just covering it up with the marinade, really. Um, smells amazing, it has the whole kitchen smelling amazing, like the Caribbean or something. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this up. Let's put this in the refrigerator for about an hour just to see how it works and we'll be back After that, I'm gonna go and check on it and it still smells amazing I can definitely tell something has changed the beef entirely it now has exposed fibers and all types of things that wasn't present before but he's also instructed us to rinse off our steaks which makes a lot of sense because it would just kind of keep cooking the steak so I'm basically just rinsing it here. Uh, rinse them thoroughly too. Um, you don't really want any of that pineapple left over. I don't want to taste the pineapple for real, for real. All right, now I'm just gonna pat them dry. I wanna pat them more dry than I probably would even focus on any other steak drying because supposedly doing it this way prevents it from getting the sear that it needs. So I'm just gonna try to prevent any blockages from a good sear. So I'm just gonna go ahead and season this up with some salt and black pepper. I really don't wanna to put too, too much seasoning on this um, because I really wanna to test to see if the flavor is there without adding too much extra stuff. Um, and just pat that down and we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Truthfully, if you want to add a little sprinkle, a tiny sprinkle of garlic powder in here, you can, but please don't overdo it with the seasoning. If you're going to follow this, just experiment on your own, basically. But um, I'm just going ahead and using some vegetable oil so I can start my uh, steak so we can sear those off in my cast iron. I want to use my cast iron because I knew that is the man for the job for getting this nice and hot. So I'm going to try to get some color on these. I'm, I'm really pressed to get some color and flavor on this. Already I'm impressed by how it's, how it's kind of broken down the steak. It's almost like you beat it with like one of those mallets or something, but it's cool. 
All right. Uh, see, I can see what they're talking about here. Like, even then, it got a nice sear. Like, I did everything that I normally do when I make steak, and it really didn't get a sear. It actually looks kind of lifeless, unfortunately. So I'm going to try to add some butter in here, see if I can help the butter, you know. Um, just get some color. Get some color on there, some more flavor. Now, I'm also going to add some more cloves of garlic I've crushed. And I also want to just add some uh, some herbs in here. I don't really feel like the herbs are going to distract from the initial flavor that I'm looking for too much. Um, but I'm just going to butter baste it and just hope that it makes a difference. Um, it smells amazing though. Take notice of how the steak is kind of breaking apart. It's still really not making a difference. It's just lifeless kind of, unfortunately. I mean... Maybe it's really something to do with the pineapple that's destroyed its ability to get a caramelization. Um, but I just kind of started to rotate it a lot in the butter. But the issue that you arise is now I'm overcooking my steak, basically. It's a crazy experiment that I really do like. But um, I can already see some of its disadvantages. I really actually think that this recipe might be a better chicken recipe. But we'll see. Honestly, I just want to go ahead and just pour the rest of my butter on. Again, I'm trying to incorporate as much flavor as I possibly can before I try it and I sample this. Um, and after I let it rest for about five to 10 minutes, I'm just going to go ahead and slice it and see what's going on. Now, I didn't super overcook it, but it is pretty overcooked. It's probably like a good medium rare when it probably should be like a medium, especially a steak of this size. But Again, I couldn't get a nice caramelization on it. I mean, from the taste, only thing I could dislike is I don't know if I rinsed off the steak as well as I thought I did. But honestly, the pineapple flavor just might be that damn strong. But I'm just gonna taste it a few more times. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not what I would want in a perfect steak. 